Dragon does nothing. The world's worst criminal. The man admired by Bartholomew Kuma, son of the marine hero and father of the future Pirate King. He is all of those things. But when I say that we've never seen Dragon lift a finger, I mean that almost literally. Despite all of this in over 1,000 chapters of assorted pirate story, Dragon hasn't really done anything and it's become a bit of a fan base meme. But we're here today to test whether or not that's actually true. Because I definitely don't think Dragon gets enough credit for the stuff that he has done. And a lot of that comes down to how Echiro Oda has chosen to portray Dragon in the manga. So I've gone through the entire series, logged all of Dragon's appearances and historical notations. And what we're going to do, right, is we're going to mathematically calculate exactly how much nothing Dragon has done. And with that, let's begin our Dragon quest. 25 years ago, Dragon started the Freedom Fighters. And in a slightly cringy name aside, this is a good start because starting something is indeed something. 24 years ago, Dragon witnessed Goldie Rogers execution, and he did what would go on to become a classic dragon maneuver, which was to stand there and do nothing. But to be fair, so did everyone else who was there. But also for the sake of this video, he did nothing. 24 years ago, Dragon also visited Ohara. He even brought some flowers, which is lovely. And he said, I will create a military force that can actually fight back. Just watch Vegapunk, I'll change the world. So he said what he would do, but didn't actually do anything here either. In that very same year, Dragon took another lovely trip to the Sorbet Kingdom and broke Bartholomew, Kuma, and Ginny, no last name provided, out of prison. This might seem like Dragon did something, but don't you be fooled. The only thing we actually saw him do was stand there with his arms folded with a bemused scowl on his face. Outside of the prison, all we saw was an explosion, so this probably wasn't Dragon's powers at work, and so with all of the available evidence, he didn't really do anything. Also, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp, a platform designed to connect you with a licensed therapist, trained to listen and provide you with helpful, unbiased advice. Starting therapy can be difficult, and difficult in ways you're not expecting if you've never done it before. I mean, just finding the right therapist in the first place can be this whole odyssey in and of itself, depending on your area, bookings, networks, and just all of the stuff that I don't want to think about. But BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30 30,000 therapists in their network, with sessions available, phone calls, live chats, messaging, whatever works best for you at whatever time is most convenient for you. As an introvert, I highly value being able to choose when and how I speak to people. So this is very much a win-win for me, as well as a win for the over 4 million people who have already used BetterHelp to start healthy, happier lives. And you can do the same through my link in the description. To get started, you just need to fill out a questionnaire describing your specific needs, and in most cases, you'll be matched with your therapist within 48 hours. The best part is, if the therapist doesn't feel right for you, which is okay, that's quite common when finding a therapist. But in that case, then you can switch to a new therapist at no extra cost without stressing over all of the things like insurance and networks. So if you think you might benefit from therapy, then consider BetterHelp. And if you visit through my link in the description, then you will get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So give BetterHelp a go and see if it's right for you. And thanks so much again for better help for helping to sponsor this channel. But for now, it's back to you, me. Now for the next 10 years, we know very, very little about what Dragon did. However, if I had to wager, I'd say that even if every moment of every day was recorded, it still probably wouldn't be worth reporting. Two things of note. At some stage during this decade, Dragon had a midlife crisis and got himself that sick tat over half his face. And he also had a son called Luffy. But for admittedly probably good reasons, Dragon decided not to parent said son. So that's Dragon doing something followed by by doing nothing. 14 years ago, Ginny was captaining the Eastern forces and conducting a revolutionary army mission in East Blue, during which time an ominous silhouette popped up behind her. And the next thing we know, Ginny's being captured. This is of course reported to Dragon at headquarters at Baltigo. And Dragon, after taking in this information, decides to formulate a plan to do nothing. Literally the very next panel we see in the series takes place two years later. And it's not like Ginny just vanished. In fact, the revolutionary army was able to acquire some oddly detailed information regarding her whereabouts which is that they discovered that a world noble had his eye on her and that she was taken on a world government ship to become his wife. Now, conventional wisdom says the dragon wouldn't be able to do anything because this was long before the revolutionary army had built itself up into the force it is today. So just strolling on into Marijuana with a handful of individuals determined to free a single slave would surely be Correct? I mean, that's exactly what they eventually did during the reverie, but we'll get there. And I would have accepted this if not for the existence of Fisher Tiger. He climbed up the whole red line barehanded and launched a one-man attack on Marijua. In Jinbei's words, he insisted on setting himself apart from humans. He rose up and broke a great taboo by attacking sacred Marijua all by himself and freeing the slaves. But if I did want to make another excuse for Dragon, then what I'd say is that Fisher Tiger attacked Marijua 15 years ago. So one year 
year before Ginny was captured, which works both for and against Dragon. The way it works for him is that perhaps after this event, the Wild Nobles reassessed the security of the Holy Land and made it theoretically impossible to perform such an attack again. But the way it works against Dragon is because it's existing proof that a raid on the Holy Land can work. And not only that, it can succeed with a hell of a lot less tactical know-how and firepower than the Revolutionary Army possessed 14 years ago. Remember, Fisher Tiger was one man, not a particularly strong man, and he was one man without a plan, no plan. He just went in there and started messing shit up. And Fisher Tiger didn't even have any super special powers either. He wasn't a fruit user, he, did, he wasn't able to teleport like a certain Kuma. So in my opinion, Dragon well and truly did nothing. Skipping forward 12 years ago, Dragon witnessed the burning of the Grey Terminal. He's even on the cover of the chapter where it happens, which I think just displays the dragon we know best, just sitting, chilling, watering his snail phones. However, this is one situation where he deserves a lot of credit. While I guess it's still technically unconfirmed, Dragon is almost certainly the one who blew a path through the flames of the Grey Terminal and saved who knows how many lives. But in addition to that, he also went out of his way to save Sabo. And by out of his way, I mean he left his ship on his own seemingly just to save Sabo. Ivankov even gets annoyed at Dragon saying that he's late, bad Dragon, but he's late because he did something, in this case two somethings. So 12 years ago was a pretty great time for Dragon-based activity. Four or so years later, Bartholomew Kuma announced that he needed to leave the Revolutionary Army in order to find a cure for Jewelry Bonnie's disease, the Sapphire Scales. And what's very important about this is that Kuma did find out the name of the disease before he had to resign. He also found out that there was no known cure, that's why he had to do the leaving in the searching. And he tells Dragon, his boss, he tells Dragon all about this and Dragon does nothing? And you might ask, well, what was Dragon meant to do? He's not a doctor, I think. We don't know, I guess. But he's not a scientist. He can't be expected to cure an incurable disease. But at the same time, Dragon did personally know Dr. Vegapunk. And at this stage, he'd known Vegapunk for over 16 years. And there is no one more qualified in this world to help Bonnie. Now, Dragon would eventually reveal this information to Kuma, but how long would that take? Well, almost exactly four years from the time that Kuma told Dragon about the disease. And Dragon does give some justification for this. He says that ordinarily Vegapunk is kept under very heavy security because he's a very, very important world government dude guy. And Dragon refers Kuma to Vegapunk after Caesar Clown destroyed the Punk Hazard lab. So Vegapunk became somehow much easier to approach in the lab transition. You see, I would have thought that security would have been higher during the transition because there's more points of potential compromise. Regardless, I don't think that Dragon should have withheld this information. Even if Vegapunk was seemingly impossible to reach, he he should still tell Kuma about this possibility. And hey, maybe with that in mind, Kuma can scout out Punk Hazard and use the next four years to plan some sort of stealthy infiltration instead of aimlessly searching the world for a cure. To be clear, everything turned out for the best. Because of this journey, Kuma discovered all of these locations to send the straw hats to during the time skip. However, things turned out well in spite of Dragon's actions, not because he was doing the right thing or because he was doing anything. But Dragon does tell Kuma eventually. And that does lead to Bonnie getting cured I'm a bit torn on this. He did both nothing and something again, so I guess we'll just give him both. Moving forward, the last time we see Dragon in the Kuma flashback, and the last time we see him in the past at the time of this recording, is when he's reacting to Kuma's erratic behavior, and you know what he's telling his forces to do? That's right, nothing. He says that Kuma has his reasons and to not go after him. So now Dragon's philosophy of nothingness is spreading down to the others. Which takes us to two years ago in Logtown, which is when Dragon is first introduced to us in chapter 100, and he enters the series with a big bang. And again, this is unconfirmed, but it was almost certainly him who caused all of the strange weather phenomena that saved Luffy from being executed by a clown. And Dragon did go so far as to engage in the closest thing we've seen to a fight to date, which was to restrain Smoker from, uh, well, I'm not actually sure what he was planning on doing. He had his Jitte out, but what was he gonna do? Just sort of smack Luffy with it a couple of times? Doesn't matter, we'll never know because Dragon, he stopped it. Dragon got into a minor physical altercation for the sake of his son. And that is a definite did something. Dragon also says some very ominous words, which are, the world is waiting for our answer. And going forward, that quote could not be more appropriate because at this point in time, we as readers have spent over 1000 chapters waiting for your answer, Dragon. 
dragon. We have no idea what your plan is, when you're going to do it, or even if you're going to do it. This is a very exciting juncture for this video though, because we finally entered the timeline of Luffy's story, and surprisingly, dragon is sitting at roughly an equal amount of did somethings versus did nothings. But I'm afraid it's going to go very downhill from here. The return to Water 7 arc is a landmark moment for dragon, because this is the arc where we discover that Gasp, he is Luffy's father. And you'd think that such a grand reveal might come with some enthusiasm from the father, but nah. We actively see him leaving the Revolutionary Army control room where all of the stuff is happening so that he can go outside and poetically muse to himself. Live as you wish, Luffy. There are times in history where it takes a will such as yours, together with chance and coincidence, to make people question the world. The day will come when we shall meet. And it, it's lovely, there's some nice words happening there, but he's not doing anything. He's essentially taking a smoker. One of the Revolutionary Army officers even asks where Dragon is going. He's just like, I'm gonna go get Samir, you guys have got this. I believe in you. And this is why people think that Dragon does nothing. Because in so many of his non-flashback appearances, he's actively avoiding doing any work. So this is a definite moment he did nothing. And he also continues the trend of telling his subordinates to do nothing. One dude is feeling pretty good because of a Revolutionary Army victory in North Blue, and Dragon just snaps back with, don't rejoice over victories, this is war. So as soon as he spots his officers doing anything, he's like, excuse me, what's this? Are you doing Doing something will stop it. Moving to the Paramount War, this is still the biggest event that's ever happened in One Piece to date. It involved a rather large amount of the planet and almost all of the characters we'd come to know and love getting together for a big old punch fight. And Dragon was, well, he was obviously not here or doing anything else at the time. The Paramount War was published in 2010. So I imagine that Dragon was busy catching up on all of the television of that era. You know, you got your boardwalk empires, your walking deads, your victoriouses, all of the classics. And when we catch up with him after the war is over, what we see is him having a bit of a chat with Vankov on what we've established are his well-lubricated snail phones. You get where we're going here though. For this appearance, Dragon is doing nothing again. However, in this appearance, there is some promise of a thing because Dragon goes on to mention that a council of executives from around the world will be convened soon. The death of Whitebeard has destabilized the old world order. The government's machinations are all in disarray and he's not wrong about that. And you know, this really would seem like the right time to strike to initiate some sort of revolution via the use of some sort of army. Whilst your enemy is in the weakest position, perhaps in the entire history of their organization. But then I guess Dragon realized that there were four whole seasons of Victorious because he did nothing for two whole years. He procrastinated gathering this council of executives and he waited just long enough for the world government to initiate a global draft and replenish its military forces, completely restock its admirals and renew its fortifications. One of the biggest questions I've always had about the Revolutionary Army is why they didn't attack Marijuar whilst this was happening. I guess that'll all be revealed in the grand plan. Maybe attacking Marijuar isn't even part of the grand plan, but it just seems like such a like such a good moment of vulnerability, you know? You've got 100,000 Marines, all Marine Admirals, Garp and Sengoku, all of them busy down there struggling to bring down Whitebeard. So apart from the Holy Knights, there are no defenses for Marijuar at all. There could not possibly be a better time to attack than now. But he didn't, in fact, Dragon chose the exact opposite timing to attack. He sent people in during the reverie when Marijuana was the most heavily fortified it ever gets. But look, we genuinely don't see Dragon again until the Zoark, and what we see is him sitting and reading some documents and such, it looks very important. But really, he's doing even less than usual because at least he usually stands. This sitting Dragon is a whole new degree of does nothing. To Dragon's credit, he does finally call the Assembly of Revolutionary Leaders, you know, that thing he said he was going to to do two years ago, but this is Dragon's first post time skip appearance. This, we haven't heard anything from him in five years of real world publishing time. And when the time does finally come to give Dragon a dramatic re-entrance into the story, it's about the most mundane thing anyone could have ever imagined. He's sitting at his desk doing paperwork. Luckily enough though, from here on out, Dragon does pop up comparatively more frequently. Like we're talking at least once an arc from here on out. In fact, we technically see him twice during Zoe, but this, this doesn't help his case because he's reacting to Luffy's bounty with Sabo and Koala. So as usual, he's doing nothing. But during Whole Cake Island, we are gearing up for the reverie in the background and that, that comes with the promise of things. But what we hear of the Revolutionary Army is that the Blackbeard pirates have attacked Baltica. And it seems highly likely the dragon either wasn't there or didn't fight because they lost their headquarters and ran away. Funnily enough though, this is a cool moment because it's the first time that Luffy sees a picture of dragon and he's shocked that he shares genetic material with him. But the next time we see dragon is trapped 
chapter 904, where he's talking about plans to do something, but he himself is not actually doing anything. He's sitting at a table on Momoiro Island, having what I'm sure is a lovely time, because there's a distinct lack of any physical activity as per usual. It's getting to the point where Dragon's starting to remind me of those people who put content creator in their Twitter bios, and always talk about what they're going to make and how awesome the content's gonna be, but then they never actually make anything, because they've spent all of their time and energy talking about what they're going to make instead of actually doing the making. Look, actions speak louder than words. And when it comes to Dragon, he speaks like a mute. Now during Wano, we also get to see Dragon one time. It's in chapter 956, reacting to the news about Sabo, and look, of course, he's not doing anything. And at the end of Wano, I feel like the world itself has had enough of Dragon because the groups that support the Revolutionary Army have all started worshiping Sabo and calling him the Flame Emperor because he's the one actually out there getting stuff done. And that takes us to Egghead Island, the arc with by far the most dragon appearances in One Piece at the time of this recording. He rocks up in 1058 to stare at Kuma for a bit, but otherwise does nothing. He joins a group call with Sabo in chapter 1060, but again, does nothing. Shortly after, we also hear him conversing with Shaka on Egghead Island. Although I want it noted that Shaka called Dragon because he wanted to warn him about his imminent demise. So again, Dragon isn't actively doing anything. And you know, when Shaka tells him about the feeling that eh, he's probably gonna die, Dragon responds by telling Shaka to stop joking by telling him to do nothing about that feeling he's having. Classic Dragon. In chapter 1067, Dragon does nothing, whilst Kuma breaks free and pops away to the red line. Then in chapter 1068, Dragon still remains far too shook to be doing any of the things. In 1082, Dragon sits passively as Sabo prepares to tell him everything that happened during the reverie. However, he does bring out a lovely bottle of wine to share with his comrades. And in 1083, there's a big moment of character development as Dragon pours the wine with a top top sound effect. And it's insane that that's worth noting as an activity. But it's genuinely exciting if all you do in One Piece is watch Dragon. And in 1086, after Sabo's story is finished, you can see that Dragon has also finished his glass of wine. That's a three part narrative right there beginning, middle, and end. And Dragon's final appearance at the time of this recording is in chapter 1103, where Dragon is theory crafting with Ivankov as to where Kuma may have gone. So Dragon there being about as useful as a One Piece YouTuber on the internet. So our final total is, across 29 appearances and recorded events in the One Piece manga, Dragon has done almost quite literally nothing in 23 of them, which is a do nothing rate of 79.3% across his One Piece career. So it's not that he hasn't done anything in world. He's been very influential, making a lot of decisions that a lot of other people carry out. But it's just that whenever we as readers see him, approximately 80% of the time, he's being completely inactive. It's at the point where I think Etra Oda has been a bit too generous with Dragon's appearances in the series, and maybe shouldn't be including him as much until he's actually ready to kick Dragon into gear. Because I remember the days when seeing Dragon used to be an event, like something that would only happen once every couple of years. And even if he was doing nothing the rarity of just seeing him was something in and of itself. But these days, it's not rare anymore. We see Dragon too often and he does too little on screen, which is what results in the overall impression that Dragon does nothing. But if you wanna do more than Dragon, then please do subscribe to this channel for consistent injections of One Piece culture administered directly into your YouTube feed.